But in this single tree of life, in the conventional paradigm, uh, if that were true, then we must have all of these transitional forms between kinds. Yeah, so that's a good question. So there are a lot of critters out there, especially in the fossil record, that are put forward as these things they call transitional forms. I like to call them intermediates. I like to just think of them in terms of the qualities that they possess rather than whether they're some sort of transition. Um, and in my view, based on my years of study, I see two kinds of intermediates. I see intermediates that occur within a created kind, where I can say, oh yeah, this is this created kind. And then I see intermediates that appear to possess traits of more than one created mm -hmm. kind. Mm -hmm. So actually I have right here in my backpack, one of those sorts of transitions. So this, huh. this is a mesohippus. Okay. You have to explain that. Very small, right? Mm-hmm. But this is a member of the horse kind. And if you've ever seen a horse without its skin on, you'd say, oh yeah, that looks just like a horse. But that's not enough for a scientist. You, you can't just go on, oh, it looks like a horse. You gotta do some statistical analysis. And I've done that too. So I've used characteristics of the, the, the skull and the teeth here to show that in fact, yes, this is a horse. It fits in the horse created kind. It is not something else. It is definitely a horse. So this thing is supposed to be one of those transitional fossils uh, as horses are evolving from their tiny little ancestors. I and mean, what I'm seeing here is really just another version mm -hmm. of a single created kind. Yes, it's a horse. Uh, and yes, it's different from the horses that we have today, but the transition is only within the created kind. Now there are others, as I said, there are intermediates uh, that appear to possess traits of more than one created kind, but we'll have to go over to the birdhouse to check those out. Okay. <laughs>